coming up. When you think of the small Himalayan kingdom of Bhutan, you may think of a country that's famous for promoting the concept of gross national happiness. It was coined back in the 1970s, and the phrase was designed to represent the challenge of balancing the material with the spiritual. But unemployment, poverty and corruption are big challenges for the country. A new short film has just been released which looks at the lives of entrepreneurs in Bhutan in the hope of encouraging further business growth. It's called Made in Bhutan. Let's take a quick look. I visited landfill before I started this project and in that landfill, I could see almost 50 to 60 percent of garbage was recyclable. People were very careless about waste, and nobody took that initiative to start something there. So there was a missing link. So I need to bridge that missing link. That instant, you know, that feeling gave the birth to Bhutan's first waste management company. With me here in the studio is the film's producer and director, Herendal Chatelard, and also Bhutanese entrepreneur, Karma Yonta, who you just saw in that clip. Karma, I have to start with you, because when I first saw that clip, I couldn't believe it, really. I never associate Bhutan as a place with massive landfills. Is there a rubbish problem in your country? Oh, thank you, Lucy. I don't think there is a big problem with the rubbish today, and we do not claim to do something you know, very different or something very special. We are just trying to be a responsible citizen or being an entrepreneur who has some social objectives, you know. So this waste management has become an issue today to most part of the world, even to the developed nation, even to the developing country. And Bhutan makes no exceptions, you know. We are going to face it. But at this hour, we do not have as such big problems. And the waste composition in Bhutan are not so complex as it is in developed country. But it might grow. So we are taking timely measures to tackle it before it becomes a problem, you know. Okay, Arundhal, where did you get the idea for this film? You're not Bhutanese yourself. No, I'm, I'm not Bhutanese actually. Um, I was actually invited by an organization that's based out in Bhutan. It was one of the first registered charities called the Loden Foundation and they run many educational programs, one of which is their entrepreneurship program. And that's been running for about five years now and they've had so many successful entrepreneurs such as Karma Yonten that they, um, they really felt that they needed to, a film to reflect you know the success of these stories and how was it filming there it was very intense i must say we uh we filmed for about three weeks non-stop uh, every day back to back but the 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 interest in in the, the subject matter actually was very interesting because an entrepre entrepreneurship is is not actually what what widely known out in bhutan so and why is that Kama? why why is entrepreneurship not encouraged until it, now no it is still a new culture you know we haven't had that people who have gone through that entrepreneurial phase in you know, an exciting journey. Now that there are a lot of problems, youth and employment problems, so people are graduating, we need more of employment. State is not able to provide enough employment, so one has to stick, you know. So so now the culture of entrepreneur is growing in Bhutan, so we, we can say that we have countable numbers. So is there a genuine problem with youth unemployment? We, we, we don't have exactly, you know, at this hour, we have just 2.1 percent of youth unemployed, you know. So, which is not a big figure, but we are trying every measures, you know, we are trying to find, identify the problems and we're going to clear the mess. It's one of the issues which you see in other countries as well, that all young people would love a job with the government. That, that so I think that, you know, as an entrepreneur, I, I always felt that I had a different calling. I can contribute to government in my own way, you know, by collecting trash, you know. So that's how we started all. One of the interesting things, of course, about Bhutan that people say is it's not just a museum. I mean, there's a, a, right. an economy here that's trying to develop. Right, exactly. But do you think that perhaps there could now be a clash between these sort of capitalist entrepreneurial values and the traditional way of life there? That's a very interesting question. And actually, that's one that I asked myself throughout the making of this film as I was meeting um, all the different individuals. But I think it's really because of the, the deep-rooted traditional values that they have in the country. I think a lot of the businesses that are being set up um, do retain those values and environmental environmental um, protection and, uh, and, tr and, and their tradition and, and, and things as such. So I think it's very important to, for the new businesses to 
to retain those. But I think it is definitely a question that's, uh, that's to ask for the, for the next the coming few years. So, Kama Yunta, do you think, though, that entrepreneurship in some way could challenge traditional life there in a way that is negative? Or, or can you only see positives? Uh, I think it's very positive. I, I don't find necessarily there will be contrast in you know, traditional thinking or the way entrepreneurs land up their you know, enterprises. It is how you groom them and how positively these entrepreneurs are taking forward, you know. So I personally don't find it. And is there a particular country that young Bhutanese you found look towards? I mean, a model that they looked at wasn't America. It's, it's funny, actually. A lot of people do, do say they tend towards, you know, Western culture. But actually, I think uh, Korean culture and a lot of Indian films um, that they, the, in terms of the new, the new trends and things as such, um, like Bollywood films and and things so they do um, and especially the hairstyles with the new the new the young guys the young, young lads that have a lot of kind of Korean hairstyles and things. Is the country also trying to encourage foreign investment or is, is that still not happening? No we we do have a foreign direct investment policy but government is looking on it but when we encourage uh, FDI you know foreign uh, foreign investment we make sure that our GNS philosophy is lived up to we have some categories because someone can't invest unless you know uh, in a way out as they want, you know, we have our own set of rules, they have to meet that also. Foreign investments are allowed now. So government is, again, the new government is framing the policies where they will be looking up on investment, foreign investment. It's fascinating. Good luck with the film, good Thank luck you with Thank your you project. It does much. look great. It was wonderful to have you here on Thank Impact. You Thank you both.